He thinks he's cute. He knows he's sexy. He's got the looks that drives the girls wild. He's got the moves. He sends chills up and down my spine. <laughs> Much like me, he's just a sexy boy. Please don't turn this off. Please. I promise. This will be a good video about wrestling. Okay? So. For years, many have known Shawn Michaels as Mr. WrestleMania. One might say that Shawn Michaels is Mr. Survivor Series when it comes to the Thanksgiving annual showcase. And just like the Thanksgiving turkey, Shawn Michaels has a delicious body. Table for two, save me a bite. As my dad used to say, it's all pink on the inside. <laughs> hey, uh, Sean, can you throw me that HBK? Oh, all right, well. Oh, okay. Jesus. <laughs> you a quarterback or something? What are they doing here? <laughs> Look at it. Staring in your soul. Instead of fixating on the screw job of November 9, 1997, I figured we could talk about five Shawn Michaels matches from Survivor Series that you need to see before you die. Right off the rip, I'd like to think about one of Shawn Michaels' best performances at Survivor Series, and that's because he carried someone that, while charismatic, probably not known for having the best of matches, I'm talking about Survivor Series 1996, Shawn Michaels versus Psycho Sid. Madison Square Garden. Technically, it was Babyface versus Babyface, but man, MSG really wanted to love Sid, even when Sid used a camera to knock out Jose Lothario, who was in the corner of Shawn Michaels at the time. I just like that part, because I hated Jose. I like to say, no way, Jose. All right. I think it really showcased the athleticism of the Sid that I feel like sometimes goes unnoticed. I mean, they do like a dueling kip-up spot at one point. You ever see him do a kip-up when he's playing softball? Definitely not. Shawn Michaels brought out the best in Sid. MSG went crazy for Psycho Sid. Hard to believe that the ruckus WF crowd wouldn't get behind a man who was basically a male stripper. Huh. The 2007 version, we're talking HBK versus RKO. Randy Keith Orton. I always thought he called it the RKO because, you know, it was like a Randy knockout, which also is not a good name for a move. I always thought it was that old film distribution company from like the 1940s, RKO. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's a very strange, it's not really like his gimmick. I'll go to the papers if I have to. In the buildup, HBK kept hitting sweet chin music. And so... Because of these incidents, the only way Randy Orton would give Shawn Michaels the match was if he wasn't allowed to use the dreaded super kick. So, in the match, at the time, Shawn was doing a lot of stuff that we didn't really see from Shawn Michaels. We're talking crippler cross faces. He was really trying to do different stuff, adding moves to his repertoire. In the end, the finish, masterfully done. When Shawn Michaels goes for the sweet chin music, out of instinct, he stops. And what happens in that moment? Orton uses that brief second of hesitation to capitalize. R-K-O. It's one of those things where it just goes to show that in wrestling and in life, one second can change everything. Wow, yeah. Very insightful, Greg. Thank you, thank you. Survivor Series 2009. Shawn Michaels versus Triple H versus John Cena for the WWE Championship. In fact, I'm going to reenact that match for you. All right, can you throw me a uh, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, please? Okay. Okay, well. Where's Cena? Oh, can you not see him? Because <laughs> that's a... That was going to be in the video. Is it going to be in the video? You have to do it now. It's going to be in the video. Not editing that out. <laughs> I'm just 
supposed to be botching this, but I'm just such an incredible catch. If you're watching, ladies, wink. In the buildup of the match, the idea was DX would have the advantage over one Juan Cena. Didn't matter who won the match, as long as it was a member of DX walking out with the championship. However, the crowd was shocked. In the beginning, HBK struck, wham, right to the face of Hunter Hearst Helmsley, taking him out of the match. He then proceeded to wrestle John Cena on his own. Do, 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 do. Oh, oh. Got some sunny days ahead of you, John. I don't know why he's insinuating that he's going to have intercourse. Um, but basically, Sean and John work a match together. Eventually, Triple H comes back into play on the outside, takes out Sean with a spine buster through a table. So then, the match for a while then becomes Triple H and John Cena. I am the game. I am that damn good. You've been looking at my wife, Stephanie. Why don't you have some sunny days instead? Uh, again, I don't know why they're just trying to instigate intercourse. It just seems weird. John Cena works two different matches in the triple threat match with both of the individuals. Eventually, comes down to Sean and Triple H for a little bit. And in the end, a sequence of moves occur to where John ends up finishing them off by Sean hitting Triple H with another Sweet chin music, boom. And then John hits Sean with an FU. Boop, 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 boop. It's a classic triple threat match. You don't even have to go watch the match. Don't bother subscribing to Peacock. Got all the action right here, baby. We can't talk Survivor Series without the classic between Shawn Michaels and Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh, wait, what? You thought I was talking about the screw job? No, dumbass. Talking about the match they had at the 1992 Survivor Series, five years before that infamous night in Montreal. In a lot of ways, it was a preview of what was to come with the new generation. Bret Hart had just become the top dog in the industry, while Shawn Michaels was still fresh with his new heel turn after betraying his old tag team partner, Marty Jannetty. This was the first singles match in the history of Survivor Series to close the show. And what a singles match it was. In a lot of ways, it's much better than the 1997 version of the match. 1992, in a lot of ways, was a slow building technical masterpiece. I think you're doing yourself a disservice by not watching this 1992 main event. The only thing that I would think was a little strange about the 92 version of the match was after Bret Hart ended up celebrating his victory in the ring with Santa Claus while snow fell from the ceiling. Why would Santa Claus even be there? Isn't he busy? He's got a lot of coming up soon. There's been a lot of abuse allegations coming out against Santa Claus. Um, if Santa's canceled, then so too is Christmas. Yeah. It's unfortunate. There's no reason to be a good kid anymore. Do whatever you want, kids. We're not encouraging that. Go into your mouth first, get up a credit card, no. and then subscribe to the Patreon. You know what? I like how you think. Kids, subscribe. Subscribe. The final match that you should watch before you die, which could be any moment now, Survivor Series 2002. The first ever Elimination Chamber match. Devised and created by Eric Bischoff, general manager of Monday Night Raw, six men went into a hellacious structure. Yes, you might think Hell in a Cell would be the most hellacious structure, but it was in fact the ten tons of steel that was the Elimination Chamber. Shawn Michaels with his short Dutch boy haircut, his shit brown tights, that we will never ever forget. Fun fact, I tried to encourage Johnny Gargano to wear shit brown trunks for his first Elimination Chamber match, but this guy goes, mm, I want to wear special bluey gear for my son. And I said, dude, 
you only get one first elimination chamber. And he said, I only get one first birthday for my son. And I said, boo fucking who? The Illumination Chamber has changed a lot over the years. Now they put padding on the outside of the ring, and they just didn't do that back then. These guys were just being backflipped and thrown on a solid steel. I didn't like how they hyped bulletproof glass early on, but then Shawn Michaels just went through bulletproof glass. Like, if a bullet can't go through it, why is it that a body can? That just doesn't seem safe. Up to code. But Shawn Michaels was very hard. Maybe you should change his name to the Bulletproof Glass Break Kid. I don't know. You don't think that rolls off the tongue? No. Okay. A lot of memorable moments in that match, including RVD crushing the trachea of Triple H. Despite that, dude still wrestled the whole match. In the end, it came down to Chris Jericho, Shawn Michaels, and Triple H. Chris Jericho and Shawn Michaels giving us a little preview of what we would see next year in 2003 when they did Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho WrestleMania. Chris Jericho gets taken out with a super kick, comes down to Hunter Hearst Helmsley and HBK. The two have an incredible backstory going all the way back to DX in 1997. They just had their incredible street fight at SummerSlam. Who would win? Would Triple H retain and continue his reign of terror? Or would Shawn Michaels make the greatest comeback in the history of wrestling, and win the World Heavyweight Championship. Well, I think we know how this story ends. While wearing the poopy brown gear, Shawn Michaels hit the sweet chin music that we all know and love, got the pinfall, and became, for the first and only time, the World Heavyweight Champion. Shawn Michaels has a history of being the first in many special matches. He did the first Hell in a Cell. He did the first ladder match. And of course, he made us all remember the very first Elimination Chamber. Do you think Shawn Michaels is Mr. Survivor Series? What are your favorite Shawn Michaels matches at Survivor Series? Did we leave one out? Leave it in the comments below. Do you think I'm just out of my mind? Who do you consider to be the best of all time when it comes to Survivor Series performances. Tell me. Yell at me. Say bad things to me. Subscribe. Am I still in camera range? Yeah. Like well? You're clear a little bit out of it. Okay. Everybody can see what you're, you're very flexible. <laughs>